Concorde Aircraft Battery Video Training Series Capacity Testing. Hello, my name is Walter Heine, and I'd like to welcome you back to the Concorde Aircraft Battery Maintenance Training Video Series. In this video, we will discuss capacity testing with our Vice President of Advanced Battery Technology, Dr. Dave Uditakis. Would you please explain why it is important to do capacity testing and how it is done? Of course. Battery capacity is a measure of the energy a battery can deliver during its operation. When you do a capacity test, you are measuring the battery's actual capacity in comparison to its rated capacity. In other words, the capacity test is measuring the battery's state of health. For example, if a battery is rated at 30 amp hours and can only deliver 15 amp hours when discharged, then its state of health is only 50%. Because the battery often serves as an emergency power source on the aircraft, checking the battery's state of health is very important. If the battery has a low state of health, it can jeopardize safe landing of the aircraft in the event of a generator system failure. So, how do you actually measure the battery capacity? In spite of what you may have been told, there are no quick check meters or instruments that have an accurate reading of battery capacity. The only accurate method is to fully discharge the battery and directly measure the capacity it delivers. The detailed test procedure is covered in the testing and fault isolation section of our component maintenance manuals, or CMM for short. This CMM is for main aircraft batteries. We have a separate CMM for emergency aircraft batteries. A copy of the appropriate CMM is included in the carton along with each new battery. The CMMs are also posted on our website and can be downloaded from there. The procedure for capacity testing of main aircraft batteries and emergency aircraft batteries is basically the same, but unique mating connectors may be required to connect emergency aircraft batteries to your test equipment. The flowchart shown on the screen outlines the basic procedure for capacity testing. First, the battery is charged at constant potential to 100% state of charge. Second, the battery is discharged at constant current to the endpoint voltage. Third, based on the measured discharge time, determine if the battery passes or fails. If the battery passes, Recharge the battery at constant potential to 100% state of charge so it is ready for aircraft installation. If the battery fails, perform a conditioning charge and repeat the capacity test. If the battery does not pass after three discharge tests, it is considered end of life and should no longer be used. The process sounds straightforward, but I'm sure there are more details to be explained. Could you please show us how it is done? Of course. First, we have to make sure the battery is not too cold or the capacity test will not be valid. A cold battery should be soaked overnight in a warm room or temperature chamber to bring it to a minimum temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees C. If the battery is not cold to start with, you can skip this step. Next, measure the open circuit voltage with a digital multimeter. As long as the voltage is above 20 volts for a 24 volt battery or 10 volts for a 12 volt battery, we can proceed with a normal constant potential charge to bring the battery to 100% state of charge. If the voltage is below these minimum values, the battery will have to be charged using the deep discharge recovery procedure. This procedure is covered in a separate training video. As you can see, the voltage of this 24 volt battery is just over 24 volts, so we will proceed with a normal constant potential charge. The charging equipment for a constant potential charge must meet the requirements given in tables 101 or 102 of the CMM. Table 101 is for 12 volt batteries and table 102 is for 24 volt batteries. As seen in table 101, the charge voltage must be 14.0 to 14.25 volts, and the output current must be at least 0.2 or 20% times the C1 rating of the battery. As seen in table 102 for 24 volt batteries, the charge voltage must be 28.0 to 
to 28.5 volts. And again, the output current must be set at least 0.2 or 20% times the C1 rating of the battery. For this video, we are using a BC8000 battery charger and capacity tester, which works with both 12 volt and 24 volt batteries. We will be testing an RG380E-44 battery. We turn the unit on and set the mode to charge. The number of charge steps is set to 1. The charge time is set to 4 hours or 240 minutes. The charge voltage is set to 28.2 volts. The charge current is set to 25 amps, which is the maximum output of the BC8000. Per table 102 of the CMM, the current needs to be at least 20% of the C1 rate. For this battery, the C1 rate is 42 amps, so the charge current needs to be at least 20% of 42, or 8.4 amps. However, it's best to use the maximum output of 25 amps to cut down on the charging time. With these settings in place, we can now start the charge cycle. As you can see, the battery is charging at a voltage level above 24 volts and a current of 25 amps. Once the battery voltage reaches 28.2 volts, the voltage will be held constant at this value and the current will taper down to a very low level. We'll come back in four hours when the charging cycle is complete. Now that the charging cycle is complete, we can proceed into the discharge step. Again, we will be using the model BC8000 battery charger and capacity tester. This model is nice because it can do both the charge and discharge steps. If you don't have a BC8000, you will need an electronic load or capacity tester capable of holding a constant current at the value corresponding to the battery's rated capacity. For example, the battery we are testing is rated at 42 amp hours so a constant current of 42 amps will be used. So, on the BC8000 screen, we scroll to the capacity mode and press next. We set the battery voltage to 24 volts. Next, the endpoint voltage is set for 20 volts, which is the default setting for 24 volt batteries, so there will be no change here. Next, we enter the C1 rate of the battery. The battery we are testing is rated at 42 amp hours, so the C1 rate is 42 amps. The capacity for testing is set at 85% per the CMM. With these settings in place, we select Next to start the capacity test. As you can see, the battery is discharging at a current of 42 amps and the voltage is around 24 volts and will slowly decrease from there. The discharge step will continue at the same constant current until the endpoint voltage of 20 volts is reached. We'll come back later when the discharge cycle is complete. Okay, the capacity test is finished. On the screen are the readouts from the BC8000 to show you the results. The battery we tested gave 105.5% capacity at the 42 amp rate, which is definitely a pass. The minimum to pass is 85% or 51 minutes at the C1 rate. In the CMM, there is a formula to convert runtime minutes to capacity percentage. If the battery had tested below 85% or 51 minutes, then it would have failed the capacity test. If this happens, then you would need to proceed with a conditioning charge and repeat the capacity test. Like the deep discharge recovery procedure previously mentioned, we will go through the conditioning charge procedure in a separate training video. So that's all for now regarding the capacity test procedure. Dave, before we finish, there was one topic I think we should discuss. I frequently get asked how often the capacity test should be performed. Would you please cover this aspect right now? Somehow I knew you were going to ask about that, Walter. As explained in the CMM, the frequency of capacity testing depends on whether the battery is used to start the engines or as an emergency backup battery. I have prepared the table shown on the screen that summarizes the capacity testing intervals 
for Concorde aircraft batteries. As seen in the table, the first check on all battery types is at 12 months or 1,000 flight hours. But the interval for subsequent capacity checks depends on the result of the current test. Basically, if the capacity is below 91%, the interval for subsequent checks is cut in half. For example, a turbine starting battery will need to be capacity tested every six months or 500 flight hours as long as the capacity is 91% or above. Once the capacity drops below 91%, it will have to be capacity tested every three months or 250 flight hours. For this reason, it is important to run the discharge to the specified endpoint voltage so you can determine the percentage capacity and proper subsequent check interval. Great job, Dave. So to recap, we have covered how to do a capacity test and how often to do it. We know the main benefit of the capacity test is to verify the battery's airworthiness. From a cost standpoint, it seems like an extra expense that has to be incurred. However, from a safety standpoint, the extra expense is a small price to pay for knowing that the battery will provide its emergency function when needed. Walter, I totally agree. If these instructions are followed, then you will know that you have an airworthy battery in your aircraft. Also. As a reminder, the CMM is the governing document for servicing Concorde aircraft batteries, and this video does not take the place of the CMM. If you have any questions regarding the CMM, please contact Concorde's Customer Service Department. Thank you everyone. Be safe.